Oh, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. Hello to all of our Twitch homies, twitch.tv slash F4W video. Everybody Sports Byline, the Mightier 1090. Last night, AEW and NXT. Lots of stuff happened on both shows. There were no title changes on the AEW show, despite multiple championship matches. The best friends beat FTR. Once again, with help from Tully Blanchard. And afterwards, Miro, upset that the best friends had inadvertently destroyed him and Kip Sabian's arcade-style game, came down and destroyed the best friends, so that will be the next feud. Mm. MJF is asked to join the Inner Circle, and next week, him and Chris Jericho have a steak dinner to discuss this situation. Hopefully at a high-end steakhouse. Wagyu... Etc. Cody and Orange Cassidy went to a 20 minute draw where, in the last moment, Orange Cassidy had Cody pinned, but the time limit expired. This sets up a rematch in two weeks. And the winner of that match will face Darby Allen coming up at the full gear pay per view. Matt Hardy has been cleared to return, and as God is my witness, he will be feuding again with Sammy Guevara. A cursed feud if there ever was one. Hopefully it's one and done and like maybe they can wrestle in pudding or something. Something exceedingly safe. Hikaru Shida beat Big Swole. This match was horrific. That's being kind. Just one botch spot after another. Overly complicated. And it was not good. But in the main event, what was a good match? John Moxley... Defeated Lance Archer in a no-DQ match via flash pin. Cradled him after Lance Archer had hit the blackout. And afterwards, the great Eddie Kingston is so great that he came out and he beat up John Moxley. And he cut a promo so good that they did the impossible, which was make me care about seeing a match that I saw three weeks ago with a clean finish Again, on pay-per-view in another three, four weeks or whatever. It was a masterful performance by Eddie Kingston. I could not be more excited for this match. And then briefly on NXT, they announced that Finn Balor, his jaw is in fact broken. He underwent surgery, and they are going to give it a few weeks to determine whether they need to strip him of the title. It is touch and go. This is a shoot. If he seems to be recovering rapidly, he'll remain champion. If not, they will be forced to strip him of the title the title we had a match undisputed versus Lorkin and Birch undisputed one therefore next week on this show they will be getting a shot at the NXT tag team titles NXT actually seems to be doing a better job booking where they're already building up a match for next week and they're building up matches for two weeks from now at Halloween Havoc so there is more long-term planning going on right now than there has been for a while Johnny Gargano beat Austin Theory. He'll be facing Damian Priest again at Halloween Havoc. And Candice beat Shotzi Blackheart with help from Indy Hartwell. She will also be getting a title shot at Halloween Havoc. Both of the Garganos, their title shots will be spin the wheel, make a deal. Not joking. Which actually I'm excited about for a non-takeover Halloween Havoc wacky television show. I'm all for spin the wheel, make the deal. And yes, Damian Priest defeated Dexter Loomis when Cameron Grimes, arguably the most charismatic man in NXT, defeated the most uncharismatic man, well, he caused him to lose, Dexter Loomis, and they will be having a feud which blows my mind. But that's coming up. Those are the highlights of the two shows. Mike, what did you think? Well, I mean, if there's any better person for... Sam Shaw there, it's, it, it's got to be Cameron Grimes, right? I mean, what are going to make his matches worth watching? It'll be the opponent in all likelihood. He's a guy, probably a very nice guy. I don't know, but he's got a great look. Other than that, bro, he's uh, a serial killer. That's yeah, he's a serial killer. And, uh, you know, serial killers who could work, I, I'd be more accepting of on TV. But unfortunately, because he can't, Cameron Grimes uh, is going to take one for the team. I'm actually looking forward to, to seeing what he can do with him. Um, my biggest thing, because, of course, you mentioned 
your favorite food as much as you can. You talked about it with Dave. What what houses did you go to on the boat last night? If you were MJF, what kind of cut of steak would you get for Chris Jericho? Dude, A5 Japanese Wagyu, if you really want in the inner circle. What a stupid question, Mike. Do you know whoa, nothing whoa, about whoa. steak? I know a lot about steak. I mean, you could do a lot of different things. I mean, can you imagine getting them like a big, just a big, like a 54, some massive size porterhouse, right? Like a 32, Dude, it's not the por- size. It's the, it's, the, it's the type of steak and the cut. Japanese well, could- A5 Wagyu, you could get them a half pound, and Jericho will be so stuffed he won't eat for three weeks. You don't want to do any panache with this? You don't want to get him like a tomahawk Mike, and get his car- name Mike, carved in it? He's like trying to get Yankee into Stadium? the inner circle, not out. Well. Let's see what everyone else is saying about this. You live in, in the real world with all your Wagyu beef. You know how much that stuff costs? I didn't say I was sitting here eating Wagyu beef every day, but you asked if I oh, wanted yeah, to right. get into the inner circle, what would I buy Chris Jericho? And I told you, Japanese A5 Wagyu. Olive Wagyu, preferably. <laughs> Cody sold for the gods last night, this person said, but as a humble human, it was a bit too much for me to take. That said, I was on the edge of my seat the entire match, an abject terror that Orange Cassidy might win. How could you... Wait a second. You were on the edge of your seat the entire match, but you felt like it was too much? That sounds like it was exactly enough. Isn't that what you want? Yes. Well, maybe they've got some nervous conditions, a stomach condition or something like that. They get to the edge of their seat and it's like, oh, man, you know, it uh, throws them off. They need some Dramamine. That's what they need, some kayfabe Dramamine. Person says, Inner Circle and MJF won the night for me. Consistently my favorite part of AEW Dynamite. This is going to be, this will be, and granted, AEW has only been around for a year, but this will be an AEW all-time classic angle with Chris Jericho and MJF. It's impossible not to be. They're both they're both two of those performers where I don't think it's imp- I don't think it's possible for it to be bad. Like you may not think it's great, perhaps you will not think it's funny because because comedy is subjective, but these two guys it's going to be very difficult for them to have a bad segment together. And if they do, it's it's potentially so bad it's good. We'll find out. But yes, <laughs> they they can do too much. They could be too heavy handed with it, doing it. But the thing is, AEW is not WWE, so they won't do it in every segment. They won't force it and because the stuff that they're forcing needs to be forced. I mean, how they've played this has been very, very good. Most of the segments they've done from the entire time this company has been in, in existence, their interplay has been very, very good. Just don't go heavy handed with it. Just leave everybody a little bit of want, you know, of what's going to come next. And that's all you need. It's as simple as that. Got a lot of people asking here about about a big swole. What are your thoughts on Big Swole? I remember the Mae Young Classic. She was involved in one of the worst matches for that tournament. And recently she's been involved in some bad matches on AEW. Well, the fact of the matter is, Big Swole debuted in 2015. And the fact of the matter is, with women's wrestling in this country, she did not have the opportunity to do tons and tons of matches. And so she is still... Very green. When was the May Young Classic? Wasn't it like 2016 or 2017? Or it's it's been a while. It's been more than two years ago. Okay, so at the time that she was doing the May Young Classic, she'd probably had a handful of matches in her lifetime. Now here she is, and she's still green. And they're throwing her out on national television live, and things are going to happen. She's not ready to go live doing complex matches on national television. Now, if you want to put her in there with somebody who's great and do a very, very simple match, and you can have a very good, very simple match. I sit here and I watch the G1, some of the best matches of the year. In fact, they're all the best matches of the year for the most part. And Ishii, nothing but simple matches. Tanahashi, nothing but simple matches. And they're fantastic workers. You can have great matches doing very, very simple things. But they keep having her try to do very complex things live. And it doesn't work out. Back in a moment, Observer Live.